Hey Athena, hi Lisa, I would love to ask you about the idea of a career, life person, or calling. I feel a strong urge to follow my heart and yet there is also a level of pinning planning and mind that seems to be needed. Sure, mind is really necessary to function in this society. You couldn't, if you didn't have the ability to think, you wouldn't be able to book a train, to book a flight. But you just need to make sure that your career is based on what expands you rather than a sense of fear you're afraid of not having money or you're afraid of something of not having a career and lack that you're trying to get love from doing that career that you're doing it because yes you can call let's speak about this it's easier Hey, Athena. Hi. Hey. I don't think I've got good enough internet for video. Could I just ask you to turn your video off? That's okay. I can totally turn it off. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for taking my call. With pleasure. Um, yeah, I, this is, um, I've been, you know, I've listened to you a little and I've, I've definitely been, um, I've listened to non-duality quite a bit, and I feel like I have, I feel like I've grasp, grasped, you know, what, I've grasped it in a way, and it's been, like, I've been living in that reality of understanding um, kind of like the dreamlike essence of this life, Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like this once I hear the word career or life calling and I used to almost like ignore it and just kind of no I'll just go with the flow um but what I end up doing is when I just go with the flow um I'm really much pretty much living the life of like a retired person like <laughs> you know I just get my food I you know I um and and then it really does go, come down to I want to also be like financially independent, which right now I'm not. Yeah. Um, and I've, it's like, it's been this like constant battle of um, needing to just having that financial independence and doing something that I love. Yeah. Um, and then it's, so it's like, it's like, I'm, it's like a huge duality. It's like yeah. when I just let go of everything, nothing is there and it's great. But then it comes down to, I mean, I mean this is like one of the, I think probably one of the most common questions is like, then it comes down to the career and I've done the whole, exactly what we were talking about before. Like, I'm just going to do this corporate job and being like, Oh, I'll just let the body and mind do it. And it's okay. Like it shouldn't affect me, yeah. <laughs> but I can't do it. Like my nervous system can't take the kind of job that I was like trained to do by my degree, it can't do that kind of job anymore. And I don't, I can't do it. Like yeah. I've done that and it feels awful. I, um, it's bad for my health. And so I want to move into another space. And like I said, it takes planning and that I need to, I used to be like almost like invited away. And now I'm like, no, I, this actually is going to take me sitting down and looking where are my passions so that I'm not just going job to job I can actually focus yeah. on something that I might yeah. love and then and then it's like oh yeah. well, I love so many things so I'm just wondering yeah. um what how to yeah go ahead what's your what's your relationship like with money um my relationship with money is like, it doesn't feel great. It feels like I wish we just didn't have money yeah. um, because it's been such a big emphasis, exactly what you're saying in our society, yeah. where it just feels like you need money and um, everyone's game is 
getting more money and yeah. everyone sells their souls at these jobs to get the money yeah. and um I I do I love the analogy you brought with the cherries and the this and I wish it was a little bit more like that um but it just feels like so you've got to do this first you've got to heal that with the money you've got to change your attitude with I... money because if you don't change your attitude to money you're going to keep repelling it <laughs> yeah like it's just like it's like the the, the, like so the easy one to to put an analysis G2 because everyone can relate to this if you keep seeing yourself as victim then you're gonna keep finding perpetrators so if you keep seeing yourself as victim to money you're gonna keep being a victim to money like you're gonna keep being poor to money or even you'll get rich to money but you'll still see yourself as poor I know many rich poor people as well mm -hmm. but they they also their whole feeling is fighting with money so this and it doesn't need to be perfect like the the old patterns of it can come up like so you can you've had this body that's conditioned so you can have your old an old pattern of your relationship towards money but you've got to begin to love money <laughs> like this is the last thing you'd expect a spiritual teacher to say yeah. to you you've got to love money how can mm -hmm. you, how can you, because the career is, obviously you, you want to produce money back. Like it's not that you want to do the career and, and not receive any fruits back for it. So you've got to love what, what's coming back for it. So it's like, imagine if you were trading with your neighbor and your neighbor kept giving you like beetroot and you don't like beetroot. Now that would be painful. Every time you give <laughs> your neighbor something, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get beetroot back. You've got to love receiving money. Yeah, I think I, I think I could, I mean, I don't know what it takes to heal that, but I think I could heal that pretty, um, I do love money, you know, because I think it's, it's, it's freedom, you yeah. know, but what I, and I think I could, I don't exactly know like how to heal that, but I think I could, um, like there are some things I think take a long time to heal, but I think that could just be an instant click in yeah. my mind of like, okay, I can see that, and that doesn't even have to be yeah. something I need time yeah. to. Yep. Yeah. And the um, same, and the same with spending money as well. Yeah. So you've just got to look at those two dynamics that happen um, uh, with receiving and spending money. First of all, you can you can writing down what you love and what you're passionate about is good, but you need to also just look at these two dynamics as well. So mm -hmm. with what you love and what you're passionate about doing, you've also got to see, are you prepared to receive money for that? You're prepared to be given things back for that. I mean, it's really, really beautiful when you think about it. Like, um, like so, so say if you, what your passion is, is walking dogs. Are you prepared to receive gifts for walking dogs? Mm. Like, can you name one of the ones that you've come up with? Sorry, I just have to switch on a light. It's getting very... Uh, yeah, I would love to. So, um, one thing is I love writing. Yeah. I love writing and, um, I love, um, I, I, obviously, so I love writing. I also love, um, I, I love like being able to talk to people. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I want to be, uh, maybe go back to school to become a psychologist or, even just communicate to people through writing or, um, and, and not necessarily like, um, like I, I love what you do and your uh, focus on non-duality, but I um, have recently had some like life experiences that are more in the realm of like, um, I guess like psychology and things like that of, um, and that's like a whole other subject, but of, um, almost like how people, like there are people with like s certain, sorry, this is like complicated to talk about. Um, you were mentioning at a, at a, you gave, um, like a week or so ago, you were talking about someone who was convincing you that, um, that the reason you didn't trust them was because of some like childhood trauma yeah and your childhood trauma and they were trying to like kind of like spin you yeah so basically I was in a relationship with someone who was manipulating me um 
without knowing it. And it was in a spiritual community. Yeah. Um, and that was something which like greatly heightened my discernment and not just like it, it like added a whole other level to my spirituality, but also adding in psychology yeah. and how, and like, that's something that really interests me. Like, and how, um, so, like so, how people's minds work. Yeah. So yeah. What do, what, how does it feel the idea of, um, receiving, um, gifts for that, for doing that? Like how does that feel in your body? Is if you taught people about that, how does it feel to receive gifts for it? Feels really good. Okay, so that, this is, this is flow. This is the way you've got to flow, is when your body expands at an idea. So how does it feel when you think about doing that job? Does that job make you feel expanded or contracted? Because that job is a bit of a funny job because it came from a painful experience. If it makes you feel contracted when you think about it, sorry, it's just about to go into storm here. Um, if it makes you feel contracted when you think about it, then that's not the way to go. Like only if it makes you feel expansive when you think about giving advice, not as some sort of political or to help or to save people going through that, but as a feeling of love, like giving, like when you really want to, to give to someone something. Yeah, it feels really good because all I needed was the, I was, what was keeping me from using my intuition at that moment was um, spiritual conditioning yeah. and spiritual abuse. So that's something I'm greatly passionate about. Like that's how cults originate, you know? Yeah, but, the, but, this, but, this, but, the, but this is all mind activity, like, like that, that answer to that question. I wouldn't trust that. You've got to trust the feeling. So just the initial feeling when, I, when you say about it, not like convincing yourself because of a reason, because cults are abusive. Like that even sounds like a really negative reason to do something actually because you're trying to stop cults that are abusive. It's more, <laughs> but if you have a nice feeling when um, you think of it, like your heart expands, that's the reason to do it. I like, have a great feeling about it because it's all about personal empowerment. But that's intellectual again. I'm talking about your body, that your heart expands yeah. and you feel it, not intellectually, that your, your being expands. So when you think, um, I'm going to, to give information that will empower people, like when, when you think about teaching people, if your body, your feeling body actually responds to that and it feels like love. Yeah, I feel that. I feel yeah, when I'm that's talking that's about it, that's it, it that's I feel this great yeah. love and this great yeah. like, like energy coming yeah. of just that's like... That's it. And that's how you yes, make choices. Like, that's it. That's exactly how you make choices. Often when we're making choices about business or about what we do, we're doing it from the opposite reason. We're doing it because we fear we don't have enough money or because we fear that something's going to happen to us if we don't make a choice. And, it's, and you've got to make it from that place where your body goes, yes. Not your mind, not the reason because you're helping abuse victims. I don't even believe in the word abuse, but not because of that, but because your, your being expands when you think of it. So when you think about expressing about this subject that you're talking about, that your being goes, yes, internally. It feels like love. It feels like a lover. And that's the same way you want to get with money, that when you think about receiving gifts for it or receiving money, if you want to replace it with the word money, it feels expansive. It doesn't come from a feeling of like, yuck, that's horrible to receive money, I shouldn't. It's unethical to receive money from that. It should feel like that's really beautiful that, that there is support there for that being expressed. Do you understand the difference or what I'm trying to point out? I totally get that yeah. because even when I'm talking to him, just closing my eyes and I'm feeling that. Yeah. And um, most of the times when I think about career or something, I'm totally coming from a place of mind, yeah. which is why I feel that. And that, and that duality, feels contractive. Yeah. And this is why you get into yeah. all these bad career choices and why you go from one job to another. And this is how you need to live your whole life is just from that yes, just from that place of, of yes and trusting that that yes that's inside of you and when you see that you're contracted about something and questioning that why is it is it be because of a belief or is it because it's something intuitively I don't want to do because sometimes it can be a belief like I shouldn't get paid for this or I don't deserve money and it and just examining what 
that belief is. Um, and, and, or I think that money's bad, or I think this, or I think that. And it makes your body contract. And then when you act out of that contraction, it's, of course, just going to bring back contraction. Like it's, it's like you, when you act from that contraction, you're going to bring that attraction, uh, that, um, um, that dynamic. And, and, and just so we're clear, like last week when I was talking about being convinced, and it was in a spiritual communi community, and they were a spiritual teacher, like um, that's, that's what happened here as well. That's why I struggled so hard to realize they were, um, uh, that, that what they were saying wasn't true. But when I look at that situation, I see it as a gift to me. I don't see it as abuse that happened to me. That's the difference. That's a really important difference. I see that was a gift from life, not from that person. And that person's got their own karma to live out. And they've got to do what they do. But it really helped me grow. And that's how everything that we call abuse has to be looked at. Because as soon as you look at it as abuse, there's a victim. And you're in this really negative space. Um, mindset it's like it's important to identify things to identify and name it and say oh I was gaslighted or I was manipulated but but looking at it as abuse means that you are someone separate they are someone separate and it was being done to you and really life isn't happening like that you only get what you want and I called forward that sp that experience because I was calling forward to trust myself more. And that experience did make me trust myself more. It was incredibly painful, but that's how we grow often, yeah. is through these painful situations. And that situation made you grow in so many ways. And now it's oh, going yes. to help you express. And potentially people will give you things for that expression. So you can't look at it as abuse. You have to look at it as food. They've got their karma to live out though. Like that's not gonna, that, that karma that they've got to live out is gonna be something which will make them smaller. And that's something that they can either grow from or they can even keep shrinking from and suffer more from. That's their karma though. You understand the difference? Oh, sorry, I'm such a chatted box. It's triple Gemini no. curse. <laughs> Totally. I mean, I totally agree with you from, but I, I would have to say from my personal experience, from one level, it's not abuse. And from another level, it is abuse, you know, because, and some, what have, I, okay. I'm just saying yeah. that from my experience that from, um, from a certain level, like, as long as that gives you something, um, so as long as you, yeah. because sometimes it is important to name things, so it is important to name yeah. that somebody's being appropriate to you, so if you find that labeling it on one level is something that helps you grow, then that's really positive. If yes. you find that you're using that word in any way to stay victim to something, then it, yes. won't, it won't serve you. And sometimes it is important to, to name things that, to name things, so, so like, so say for an example the very ov obvious one is when somebody's been sexually abused as a child they might be very yeah. much believing it's their fault that that's often a case of sexual abuse as a child so actually going through a stage of naming that and saying this yep. was something you did is actually very healing and very positive but it's totally. you've, you've got to see it in that light you've got you've not got to see it in the light of something that keeps you small if you understand what I mean. Yeah. So if you find that that label helps you, then, then go for it. But it's a very um, charged word. You have to be careful with that word because yeah. it can also keep you small when you're so I think, powerful totally. and strong. Yep. I think it can be healing for some people yeah. and for other people it, it can yeah. be an opposite of healing and yeah. they need to... I think that you can twist either one yeah. that... Yeah. We're the creator of our world, and that's what was twisted for me. That's why mm. I was in the in the, I guess I'll use the word abuse or whatever yeah. that relationship dynamic for so long was. On one aspect, um, I kept telling myself, "I'm the creator," you know, taking responsibility for my life, and it's just me, and and um, and that was being that truth is manipulated mm. and is twisted. And I can also take responsibility for it, but what what's what they're doing is they're 
t- they're trying to get you to take all the responsibility, yeah. c- whether it's conscious or unconscious. And you know all about that because you've had that experience. And um, un- I think it's so, it's actually way more common in the spiritual communities yeah. than I ever thought was possible because I used to think, oh, spiritual people are all good. If I need someone, I can trust them because they're spiritual, yeah. <laughs> which is... Um, but I mean, yeah, I, it's it's a it's a fine line. It is a really fine line because it is that is yeah. I mean, I can't comment on it too much. I mean, because um. With, the, with this sort of subject, it's something I have to really go through slowly with an individual person. You know what I mean? Like, I have to yeah. go through it really slowly with that person. And, and it's hard for me to make generalised statements. Because on one side, it's so great to see your part in it. And at other points, it's really great to just give the other person their part, if you understand what I mean. Like, so it's really, it's really individual case by individual case. That, that doesn't mean it because it's very complicated because yes it's just not easy like um to label it black and white is very yeah complicated area yeah yeah it is and i think it's like you can look at it from many levels yeah and the best and way that if is i if to i was confused yeah. And if I was going to give any advice when you're looking for spiritual yeah. teachers or when you're working with spiritual groups is, is make sure that the speaker is acknowledging their shit. <laughs> so yeah. make sure that the speaker is saying, you know, they can get caught up in these things or that they can, you know, sometimes want all the cake or like if the speaker is just making out they're perfect, this is, this is when I would just not say leave them or not say don't listen to like they might be saying really some really beautiful profound truths but just if they're only presenting a perfect story then be more conscious of of that dynamic because that's impossible that they're always right and that they're always perfect (laughs) that's just like dictatorship like that's the same like it's not so so a good way to tell when working with someone is if that person is acknowledging their crap, their side of the crap, because every person, no matter how enlightened they are, are, are going to have blind spots, are going to have weak spots, are going to be tempted by certain things. It's just the nature of these human forms. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. And I think that can be tricky when you're talking about enlightened teachers because um, I think a lot of them do say, though, like, I'm without ego and I'm... <laughs> it can be very tricky. Yeah, it can be as to well. To really yeah. discern because it can seem fine from the outside and then it's only when you really spend time with that person that you really know so yeah it's it's definitely something I'm still working out like even when we're talking about career it's like I'm I'm highly passionate about it but I don't know if that I'm that passion is just coming because I need to work that out in myself right now yeah and I need to because it's it's not only um in this relationship it also exactly what you said it 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 expands into my relationship with any spiritual teacher I've ever had. And then it's also had me question every single spiritual teacher I've ever had. That's and brilliant. I think that's really brilliant. <laughs> because they're, on the end of the day, every every spiritual teacher you've ever met, they, they're on, on one level only human and going to fall, um, fall short of their humanness, no matter what. And, and often what we've been doing is we've been looking at that spiritual teacher to give us that unconditional mother love and it's like the wrong place to be looking yes. so we're, we're wanting this unconditional motherly love because we lacked it as a child so we put it all in this one person and then 
or that one career it can be as well it can also be you can also do that with career you can do that with so many things and that's or you can do it with money as well and it and that's the full the 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 problem is is seeing that that unconditional love is your nature and spiritual teachers are always going to fall short there's never going to be a te- spiritual teacher that doesn't because they're human on the human level their essence is the beauty their essence is that freedom but on the human level they're they're, they're uh, accustomed to the human dynamics they're not perfect they're never going to be perfect mm-hmm but that's enough yeah. my mouth I, is my mouth is sore now yeah i think i have to stop yeah. doing my uh, but i'll stop for the tonight <laughs> yeah. thank you so much With thank pleasure. you very much that was a lovely mm-hmm. question thank you for calling in and expressing thank you lots <laughs> thank of you. love to you you too bye bye thanks guys that was a lovely talk i've over talked today i've had friends over so uh my jaw is uh, getting sore um I send you so much love, so I won't be here for the next couple of weeks, so you can find those dates on my website. You can see my website below, and it will tell you the dates in which I'm absent. Um, And if you want to join my retreat in the south of France, you still can. So you can find that on my website. Lots of love. Bye, guys.